Thank you so much for joining us for CBN News Watch. I'm Ephraim Graham. Ahead today, Vladimir Putin is sending a threat to NATO if it intervenes in the war on Ukraine. We'll have more coming up. Plus, today in Israel, we explore the connection of Jews who fled the war in Ukraine to survivors of the Holocaust, now hoping to make Israel home. You heard in the borders when the Jewish community waiting for people there and there's buses and they know we're going to leave and they know that Israel is helping them to come. Then later, a survey says Christian parents have a small biblical worldview. I think what's really alarming though is how low the numbers are getting. All these stories and more are coming up next from the CBN Newsroom. This is CBN News Watch. We begin this half hour with Vladimir Putin and th threatening a lightning quick response against NATO if it intervenes in the war on Ukraine. That threat comes after Russia moved to cut off natural gas to NATO countries, Poland and Bulgaria, over their support of Ukraine. Dio Heard has more on our top story. European leaders are blasting Russia's decision to cut natural gas shipments to Poland and Bulgaria as blackmail. A memo from the state-controlled Russian gas giant Gazprom says it cut natural gas deliveries to the two nations because they refused to pay in Russian rubles, a recent demand by the Kremlin. Russia's cutoff could lead to gas rationing in the two nations, especially Bulgaria. But it could also deprive Russia of badly needed income to pay for its war effort. Poland was already in the process of phasing out Russian natural gas in its energy supply. And Poland's prime minister said the nation will be able to protect its economy. Russian President Vladimir Putin also warned there would be lightning-fast retaliation if anyone from outside Ukraine tries to intervene and poses a threat to Russia. Putin said if someone intervenes in events from the outside, it will create a strategic threat unacceptable for us. They should know that our response to counter-strikes will be immediate and quick. Putin avoided any specific mention of nuclear weapons, but his foreign minister this week said the risk of nuclear war is a real one. The warning came amid reports of explosions in three Russian cities not far from the Ukrainian border. In the midst of the fighting, the U.S. and Russia did engage in a prisoner swap Wednesday, exchanging former U.S. Marine Trevor Reed for a Russian pilot in jail in the U.S. on drug charges. Russian TV showed Reed on a tarmac in Turkey walking to his freedom, passing the convicted Russian felon swapped for his release. His parents said their son looked frail. He looked like he could hardly walk. He looked like he'd been walking shackled. We started crying. Two other Americans are still in Russian custody. Dale Hurd, CBN News. Our senior international correspondent, George Thomas, joins us now from eastern Ukraine. So, George, you travel to the front lines today. Describe the situation. Yeah, I mean, it really is tense. In the places like Kramatorsk and Slavyansk, there's real concern that the Russians will continue to move further uh, south from the Belarusian border. Uh, and then also troops coming in from Mariupol uh, and uh, the southern part of the country could come in. And so the Ukrainians are really fortifying uh, their positions, both in, in Krama, uh, Kramatorsk as well as in Slavyansk. You'll have to remember back in 2014, the Russians managed to take over parts of Slavyansk. In fact, we were at a major evangelical church uh, uh, yesterday evening, and the Russians had used the church as a base of operation for the military operations back in 2014. So the residents of Slavyansk as well as uh, Kramatorsk are very concerned. It's, in essence, from a ghost town, two ghost towns, and we went into this, uh, these two cities to provide relief supplies to those who are still uh, in the two, uh, two locations. Now, Putin has said there'll be lightning-fast retaliation if anyone from outside Ukraine tries to intervene and pose a threat to Russia. How are Ukrainians yeah. responding to this threat? Look, I think they uh, they assumed this would uh, this this threat would be there because look the the reality is that the military uh, assistance at the United States, uh, Great Britain, Germany, Poland, Hungary, all these countries are pouring all this military equipment uh, and and into Ukraine, and it's a game changer. I mean that's why you have Russia today on the ropes, uh, pretty much all around the country. They got pushed out of. Uh, uh, Erpin and Bucha and Homostel and Brovari 
uh, you see the, 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 all this equipment is a game changer. And obviously, it's, un, it's uh, destabilizing to the Russian military operation. And they're concerned about it. And then obviously, you hear these threats uh, from Moscow. Yeah, we're just about out of time, but can't let you go because we're seeing the activity behind you. You're with Orphan's yeah. Promise in eastern Ukraine. Tell us what's being done there. Yeah, yeah, it's incredible. Well, let me just give you a show and tell. I mean, this is just one room, all kinds of clothes and shoes and jackets, uh, bags and so forth that people can bring in. And then you've got people on this side. Uh, Orphan's Promise has been doing work here in the region for quite some time, and they're helping folks. It's part of the all the effort here. So many people displaced all around the country, and today Orphan's Promise is here in the region, on the front lines, helping those who need it desperately. That is certainly good to see, George. Thank you so much for your reporting. Stay safe. In other news, the U.S. Commission on International Religious Freedom wants the State Department to add Afghanistan to the list of its worst religious freedom violators. CBN's Tara Mergener has more on this and the other red flags raised in the group's annual report. Conditions have deteriorated since the Biden administration's hasty withdrawal from Afghanistan eight months ago. For the first time since 2001, the country is back on the religious freedom blacklist. The designation is reserved for countries with systemic, ongoing and egregious religious freedom violations. The 2022 report comes as the Taliban pushes for international recognition as the legitimate government there. The Taliban's return to power has had an immediate chilling impact on religious freedom and on the broader human rights environment. The study offers key insights into how the president and Congress implement the 1998 International Religious Freedom Act. The outlook is grim. There have been very few bright spots. and. And it shows the need for religious freedom to be a part of U.S. policy. And that's why renewed attention is on Russia, which the commission considers an enemy to religious freedom. And fear persecution in Ukraine will rise amid fallout from the ongoing war. The turmoil that uh, exists in that region is of great concern to to you, sir, and to the rest of the world. China is also getting bad marks as the commission reports the government is trying to reprogram entire communities while conducting business as usual around the world. Sinicization of religion, that essentially uh, changing the text uh, in line with a communist ideology. That's not religion. Syria makes the list of worst offenders for the ninth year in a row, with India, Iran, and Nigeria remaining areas of particular concern. In Washington, I'm Tara Mergener, CBN News. Promise Keepers is set to host an online event to address the issue of pornography and to provide healing for men suffering from its effects. It is called Free Man Challenge, and you can watch this evening from 8 to 9 and 11 to midnight Eastern Time on the CBN News Channel and on our Facebook and YouTube pages. Coming up, thousands of Jewish refugees are fleeing Ukraine. Some of them are Holocaust survivors. See how a rescue operation is bringing them home to Israel. Stay with us. It's the new Superbook Bible app. It's packed with games, activities, and Superbook episodes that you can watch for free. Oh, no! There's trivia, a fun daily devotional, and answers to your Bible questions. Plus, an easy-to-understand Bible the whole family will enjoy. You can even create your own Superbook character. Ta-da! It's the new Superbook Bible app. Free downloads on iTunes, Google Play, and Amazon. Heavenly Father, we do thank you for the work of your spirit, Lord God, with this movement of getting the Bible, yes. Lord, into public schools. Watch the prayer link. Tuesday morning at 7.30 on the CBN News Channel. Get Protect Your Sleep and discover how to improve the quality of your life. A free DVD or booklet from the Christian Broadcasting Network. 
if you're not a great sleeper, you can do things to make yourself a great sleeper. If you're already a pretty good sleeper, you can enhance your sleep and be even better. Five leading experts help remove the obstacles between you and restorative sleep. When you don't get a restful night's sleep, you wake up with an accumulation of stress. Call 1-800-700-7000 or go to CBN.com to get your free DVD or booklet today. Everything you do, you do better with a good night's sleep. You'll discover how food affects your sleep, how to put insomnia to rest, explore effective remedies for sleep apnea, and much more in Protect Your Sleep. Wake up to your best life and get Protect Your Sleep today. Call 1-800-700-7000 or go to CBN.com to get your free DVD or booklet. It is Holocaust Remembrance Day in Israel. Among the thousands of Jews who have fled the war in Ukraine, there are survivors of the Holocaust. These Ukrainian Jewish refugees are hoping to make a new home now in Israel. Chris Mitchell brings us their story. Ukrainians forced to flee their homes because of war. Some of them Holocaust survivors and others fleeing for a second time. You can imagine the atmosphere, nervous tension, and an unpredictable destiny. What can one expect other than being murdered? Almost all the buildings around us burn down. When a mortar hits a building, it starts a fire, and there are no means to extinguish it. There is no water in the city. While a nightmare for many fleeing Ukrainians, these Jewish refugees have a unique hope for the future. You heard in the borders, when the Jewish community waiting for people there and there's buses and they know we're going to leave and they know that Israel is helping them to come, it's like, if already to be a refugee, it's better to be a Jewish refugee. The Israeli government and Jewish organizations are banding together to make it possible. Alona Grosu of the Jewish community of Moldova says when they heard about the war, they knew the world would never be the same. So from this day, we've um, started organizing a rescue operation for the members of the Jewish communities from Ukraine. Overnight, the municipality in Kishinev, Moldova, opened its tennis center as a place for fleeing refugees, and the International Fellowship of Christians and Jews stepped in to help. With the Jewish community, with the joint, with all the organization, we built an opportunity to have places for the people to sleep, to eat, to be in a safe, warm place. More than 10,000 eligible Ukrainians have immigrated to Israel since the war began. They are fleeing Ukraine through Poland, Hungary, Romania, and about a third escaped through Moldova. From the border, these refugees are taken either to the Israeli consulate or the hub tennis center, where the Jewish agency determines their eligibility to immigrate to Israel. The foreign ministry provides them with papers and the IFCJ books them on charter flights. That's where CBN News met Ludmila Polonova, her mother Tatiana, and 16-year-old son, Andre. It's a catastrophe. It was a miracle that we were able to leave Mariupol now. On March 12th, an aircraft bomb fell next to our house. All the windows, glass, window frames, and doors were shattered. It was impossible to stay in the apartment. Ludmilla and her family lived in the basement for a week. We left thanks to my son. We found out that in the nine-story building next door, there was a phone reception on the ninth floor. My son remembered that his classmate lived in the neighboring town of Mangush, and her father owned a minibus. My son ran to the ninth floor, called her, and her father took us out the very next day. It wasn't the first time this family had to escape. They fled the Donetsk region in 2014. This time, they have a different outlook. We expect some kind of well-being, a peaceful life. I want a future for my son. I hope everything will go well in Israel. It's hard to move, of course. All my friends are in Ukraine. But at least there will be peace in Israel. I think Israel is our salvation, and I think everything will go well for us. Until their departure, refugees are housed at places like this guest house outside Kishinev. Holocaust survivor Zenovi Lakarev came here after he turned 86 on March 16th. I didn't have a birthday. There was bombing and shelling. That's why I was at home. Two rocket explosions happened about 50 to 60 meters from our house. These were frightful explosions. Everything shook. The entire nine-story building was shaking. That's when I decided to leave. It brought back haunting memories. 
In September 1941, under bombing and shelling of the trains we were in, we left the city. We returned to Kharkiv in March of 1944. And 78 years later, with just a plastic bag in hand, Zinovi was on the run again. This time he has two daughters, two granddaughters, and a great-granddaughter waiting for him in Israel. I'm very happy that I'm finally going to leave this hell, but it's very unpleasant and heavy for me. When the hotels and guest houses were full, the Jewish community and volunteers opened this warehouse, where we met Vera Chimra. She also recalled her first time having to leave everything behind. My first evacuation took place 81 years ago in 1941. I remember a freight car. There was a transit camp like this, only this one is comfortable. Back then, the only thing we had was a blanket. Vera returned to Kharkiv after World War II and stayed put until now. I feel more cheerful. I'm able to move again. Before, I stopped moving. I had COVID with bad complications. My leg was paralyzed. I couldn't even imagine that I'd travel such distances as I didn't leave the house for half a year. So far, the IFCJ has helped more than 2,200 refugees fly to Israel from Moldova since the war started. But it's not a regular Aliyah. Benny Haddad says they usually have a chance to prepare new immigrants before they come. You're touching the people for two seconds. They're coming here, they want as much as faster to be there because they live as refugees here without anything. And the main goal is to send them to Israel and save them from here. Zinovi and Lugmila, Tetiana and Andre were among 112 new immigrants and nine pets CBN News joined on the three-hour flight back to Israel. At the Kishinev airport, they were Ukrainian refugees, but within hours, they became citizens of Israel, fulfilling biblical prophecy. We don't comprehend it yet. Thank God there's no shooting. I hope I'll never hear it again. At my age, it's a new beginning. At this age, people hang up their fiddle completely, but I decided to change everything from the start. That was the first day of their new adventure as Israelis. It may not be easy here, but they'd be planted in the land of their forefathers and should never have to run away again. Chris Mitchell, CBN News. Still ahead, we'll talk to pollster George Barner about a recent survey that says some Christian parents hold a small biblical worldview. The story's coming up. Stay with us. Are you suffering from feeling tired or worn out during the day? Can you not turn off your brain at night? You are not alone. Hi, I'm Dr. Michael Bruce, The Sleep Doctor, and I've partnered with the Christian Broadcasting Network, and we're going to bring you some unbelievable information that you can use tonight to get a better night's rest. Wake up to your best life. Call 1-800-700-7000 or go to CBN.com to get your free copy of Protect Your Sleep today. Nutrition, exercise, essential oils, weight loss, and more. It's Healthy Living with Lori Johnson. Talk about what's in this. Join CBN health reporter Lori Johnson to get the latest information from today's top health experts. This is fantastic. Find out what you need to know to live a healthier life. Watch Healthy Living Tuesday night at 8.30 on the CBN News Channel. Woohoo! Hi, Superbook fans. Here's something else you'll love. <laughs> it's the new Superbook Bible app. <laughs> it's packed with games, activities, and Superbook episodes that you can watch for free. Oh, no! There's trivia, a fun daily devotional, and answers to your Bible questions. Plus, an easy-to-understand Bible the whole family will enjoy. You can even create your own Superbook character. Ta-da! Whoa! No super balls, man. Come and... Uh, sorry, pardon me. Sorry, excuse me. Ouch! Are you getting this? Earn super points to win daily prizes, too. And so much more! <sighs> Time to get back to my adventures. See you soon. It's the new Superbook Bible app. Free downloads on iTunes, Google Play, and Amazon. 
A recent survey from the Cultural Research Center found a staggering disparity between the number of parents who claim to be Christian and those who actually hold a biblical worldview. 67% claim to be Christian, but only 2% hold a biblical view of the world. On this week's episode of The Global Lane, pollster George Bonner was asked if he was surprised by the survey's findings. It didn't really shock me because we've been studying worldview in America for more than 30 years. And so we've seen the pattern. I think what's really alarming, though, is how low the numbers are getting in terms of incidents of parents with a biblical worldview. The reason it matters, of course, is because a person's worldview develops between 15 to 18 months of age and 13 years of age. So it's those early years in a person's life where, because a worldview is essentially your decision-making filter, Every decision you make in life goes through that filter. So you need to have a worldview to get by in life. Children are trying to figure out what worldview makes the most sense for me as an individual. And one of the things that they do is they turn to their parents for clues and cues about what's the best worldview. But what we discovered is that as they're listening to and observing their parents, they're seeing a contradiction between what parents say and what parents do. Uh, what we find is that parents who biblically are called to be the primary shapers of the worldview in their children's life are not really doing the job. And even worse than that, we know now from the research that 98 out of 100 parents of children who are under the age of 13 can't do the job of handing over a biblical worldview because they themselves don't have one can't give what you don't have. So it really does amount to a crisis. Well, George, how did this happen? I mean, was it a gradual thing or a sudden thing? And, and why did it happen? Well, it's been happening consistently for at least the last 40 years, which is as long as I've been studying it. But we've seen that the momentum behind people leaving a biblical worldview or not developing a biblical worldview has really ramped up in the last 10 to 12 years. There have been a lot of cultural changes that have uh, encouraged people to take on other worldviews. There has been a shift in what influences the way that people in America think, where now we know that the arts and entertainment media and the news and information media are the greatest shapers of the way that people think. And so even when we talk about the development of a worldview, those are the two factors that have the greatest impact on that development process. And then of course, at the same time, you've got churches that have really focused on things other than worldview development and other than raising up children to be godly individuals. So you put all that together and that's why we find ourselves where we are. Uh, not to mention public schools, I'm sure. And I know you also found that this is having a devastating effect on preteen children especially. Explain that. Well, it is. I mean, what happens is because you have to develop a worldview, no matter which one you possess, whether it's going to be Marxism, postmodernism, secular humanism, biblical worldview, any of the many worldviews that are at your disposal, and the bottom line on that is that it's indicated to children, well, you know what, my parents claim to be Christian, they claim they're living a Christian life, but they don't do what they say the Bible teaches or the church teaches or Jesus is all about. And therefore, I come to conclude that Christianity isn't real. It's not reliable. It's full of conflicts. So I'm going to have to look elsewhere for a worldview. And that's why it's so easy for movies and television shows and music and video games, all the different media, to start bringing those alternative worldviews into the presence of children. And because those are more coherent and cohesive, children are more likely to buy into that and leave their parents behind. And you can watch The Global Lane on the CBN News Channel at 8.30 Eastern. You can also download the CBN News app to watch it on demand. Stay with us. Your Thursday Thanks is coming up next.
region's first ROTC graduate student. I'm Ephraim Graham, and this is Studio 5. Cruise with me as I discover the good things happening in the world of music, sports, television, and movies. The fact that Ryan Coogler was going to be directing the film, I knew that something special was going to happen. We'll chat with artists at the forefront of entertainment and explore the connection between popular culture and faith. I asked my pastor, I said, well, does that mean I'm supposed to be a preacher? He says, well, no, you already have a pulpit. Wednesday night at 8.30 on the CBN News Channel. How would you like to get a redo on your health? on your body, on your arteries, so you could have the energy you had 20 years ago. The great news is you can. I'm Dr. Mike Roizen, chair of the Wellness Institute at the Cleveland Clinic. I've written four New York Times bestsellers, but even better than having to read all that, you can listen to this DVD and watch it. Protect your heart? Yes, you can. Here's how. Go to CBN.com or call 1-800-700-7000 for your free copy of Protect Your Heart. Let the medical experts show you their new discoveries on how to avoid heart disease and even reverse it. Easy steps to uncover the hidden dangers in your medicine cabinet, reduce stress, and get a complete do-over for your health. Call 1-800-700-7000. That's 1-800-700-7000. Or go to CBN.com to claim your free copy of Protect Your Heart. Download the CBN News app 24 7 News from a Christian perspective at home or on the road. One place for all of your news. Breaking news alerts. Set daily prayer goals and pray for news stories. Read the most important news and watch CBN News Channel Live. CBN News, because truth matters. Go to CBNNewsApp.com to get the app today. Quick reminder for you, Promise Keepers is set to host the online event to address the issue of pornography and to provide men with healing. It is called the Free Man Challenge, and you can watch it this evening from 8 to 9, and then again from 11 to midnight Eastern Time on the CBN News Channel. We'll also be streaming it on our Facebook and YouTube pages. Time now for your Thursday Thankful. I trust you will join me in this prayer of gratitude. Father, thank you for an overwhelming truth. In the overwhelming moments of my life, God is not surprised or overwhelmed. He is omniscient and up to the task. He's simply calling on me to trust and rest in Him. With this prayer, I trust you will allow this day to be a day that is filled with gratitude. Make it a thankful Thursday indeed. That is going to do it for this edition of CBN News Watch. Remember, you can always find more of our news programs on the CBN News Channel. You can find them there at any time as well as online. That is CBNNews.com. We would love to know what you think about the stories you've seen here today. You can email us at the address right there at the bottom of your screen. That's newswatch at CBN.com. And, of course, you can always reach out and touch us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. We certainly would love to hear from you. We hope you'll join us again right back here next time. Goodbye, everybody, and God bless.